Welcome everybody to my eighth episode, and I had put a questionnaire out about uh, what you guys wanted to see next, and let me go ahead and turn off that about to start. Um, um, the thing is, I put in uh, cybernetic face, um, teardrops and swirls, or color theory. Well, I had one each of the, you know, cybernetic face and the teardrops and swirls. Uh, so I put out another question, you know, with the advertising for tonight's show. And, well, the reply I got back was teardrops and swirls. So guess what we're going to do tonight? Teardrops and swirls. Um, maybe I'll look at, make it look really cool and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I have my paints over here. Um, I got my big mirror again. If I can lift it up. There we go. Um, chat with you guys. Call in, um, which uh, somebody said they're already going to be calling in. So as soon as I put up that number, you can give me a call, and I'll answer it. Um, you can ask me anything uh, that you want. It doesn't have to be teardrops and swirls, but I'm going to um, share that with you because there's a lot of confusion about teardrops and doing the swirls and stuff. And I have a great way for you to learn how to do it um, real quick, real simple. Uh, and this is something that you should practice over and over and over again in your spare time so that you can really get a good grasp of it. This is something that uh, Marcella does a lot when she says you need to practice your teardrops and swirls. You need to practice them over and over and over again until you just, they come second nature to you. So, welcome to the show and if you want to call in, give me a call on the number at the bottom of the screen or on the screen. And uh, I'll be sure to answer it, and you will be live on the air with me. Uh, so, first off, with teardrops and swirls, um, it doesn't matter what size brush you use. Well, that's not true. It does matter what size brush you use. You want to make sure that if you're doing large teardrops, you want to have a larger brush. You can't do large teardrops with a small brush. So, a good example is... Um, in fact, let me see. Low Cornell number five is going to give you smaller teardrops than, you know, if you have a larger number brush. So, you know, if you look right here, um, I call this a dagger stroke. And as you see, it's not that big. Whereas if I take a larger brush, this, uh, not that one, that's number six. Let me, let me go for her, uh, uh, it's all stuck in her uh, case. I'm actually using my girlfriend's paints because I'm too lazy to go down to my car to get mine. That's what I love about my girlfriend. So, um, taking this, which is, uh, doesn't even have a number on it, but it's a nice uh, fat brush, as you see. Here, let me, there you go. And then I do it, and you can see doing a dagger stroke on that one, it's a lot larger. So having a larger brush, larger bristle brush, is good. Um, now, if you want to do smaller teardrops, you can still do it with a large brush. You don't have to switch to a smaller brush. You can do large to small to anywhere in between and stuff with a large brush, but you cannot go any larger with a small brush. That makes sense. So, doing teardrops, there are two different techniques to do. And, in fact, I'll use the palm of my hand. It'll probably be a little bit easier. Let me adjust myself so that you can see better. And, one technique is the dagger stroke. Okay? Push and then pull down. So, you push and then you pull. Okay, that's one technique that you can use. Um, most techniques that people tell you to do and to get better control is to do the drag and push. Um, this is your push and pull. You do your pull and push to do the other one. <clears throat> so let me demonstrate that one for you. And it's taking the tip of your brush and then pushing down. So you get that right there. Trying to do this on the little screen is almost impossible. 
but you get that shape. But you can also drag and push. So you get a larger one, a longer one, and you get a little bit more control out of it to do different things. So you can, you know, do different shapes, and it's a little bit easier. See, like I did with uh, that one right there. Okay, but it's whatever's more comfortable for you. But is what I suggest is you take your teardrops, you do your dagger strokes, take one leg, say your left leg, do nothing but dagger strokes on that one, and don't think about it. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Just keep doing it over and over again. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Keep doing that, and after a while, you'll start to see the difference between really bad-looking uh, teardrops, dagger stroke teardrops, and perfect ones later on. And as you do that, it'll make it a lot easier, especially when you're um, doing quick designs on kids' faces and you want to knock out those uh, teardrops really quick and easy. Just, and you're done. Um, I do it a lot. I know people that don't go with the dagger stroke because it just, it's not as controlled for them. Uh, good example, look at Dutch Bahari's uh, filigree that he does. Um, he does a lot of the pull-push type of teardrops because he has more control over it and he can get very thin lines with a nice th fat teardrop there and he can do all kinds of different things with it. Um, you know, uh, I prefer to use the dagger stroke because whenever I do like um, wings, I'm able to really control them the way I want to. I can go in a nice round pattern very easily. I can change it up any which way I want. I just prefer to do it like that. It takes me too much time to do the push pull or the pull push. Whatever. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do it that way. But, you know, you're going to use teardrops for different things. And even if I use the push pull, I can make myself a nice. You know, sort of like a comma, it looks like. You know, I get a nice fat end, and then I come out to a nice sharp point. Um, I like doing that instead of the way I did it the other way, which was the pull push, which came out with a, you know, it was a thin to thick to thin line again, and it came out with a point. Great way if I did it on the other side, I can make myself a nice little fleur de lis very quick and easy. Okay. But these are things, one leg, do the dagger stroke, do the push-pull, you know. On the other leg, do the pull-push, and keep doing it, and don't think about it. The more you think about it, the more time you're taking with it, so just do it. Get it done, get it over with, you know, it's not going to look great in the beginning, but the more you work with it, the better it's going to look. Run out of leg, take a baby wipe or a washcloth, wash your leg off, dry it off, start over again, and just keep doing that. There's going to be plenty of times that you're, you know, just bored out of your mind and, you know, you're watching TV, you're not doing anything else. Pick up that paintbrush, pick up your paint, doesn't matter what color, just practice those teardrops over and over and over again. Okay? As far as swirls, here's the fun thing. I forgot my baby wipes, so um, let me see if I can clean off my hand. Ugh. Let me see. Ah! <laughs> Black mess. Yeah, that was really smart of me. I know. So, let me uh, look over here. Um, <laughs> oh, I tell you how to turn it off, John, but you found it. <laughs> yes, my website has nice music on it. The only problem is if you want to listen to the show, you got to turn off the music. As before, and I reiterate this, um, I do record my show, so if you miss anything, you can go back and watch it. Um, I am now starting to put them on YouTube, so I'm downloading and I'm putting them on YouTube because I've heard a lot of complaints about people not being able to watch the show um, on mobile devices and on their iPad and stuff, even after the show's over with. So... With that being said, if you missed the show because you couldn't watch it on your mobile device or iPad, 
you can now watch them on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash FBA, and uh, you'll be able to see it there. So, um, as I was saying with the swirls, four different things you need to do with the swirls. I know there's only two ways of doing a swirl, but there's four actual things you need to practice when doing swirls. First one is outside, inside to outside. And you need to learn how to do it both ways. I know that's hard to see on my hand. One's going to the left, one's going to the right, but you need to practice both ways. The other way is you need to practice outside to inside, which is a little bit easier. But you need to practice it in a way where it actually makes a nice spiral. Now these are not the best. I'm doing my best to try to show you. But, you know, these are the types that you need to do. This is inside out. And this is outside in. Okay? If you practice that, you know, after you're done with your teardrops and stuff, practice these swirls. That will help you out quite a bit on all your designs. Just start making swirls, start making swirls, start making swirls. Um, the more you do, the better you get at it. Same thing with the teardrops. Okay? So when you're doing these, you know, you have a point that's there and you have a point that's there and you want to connect them up if you try to look at it and do it it's not going to go very well see those two points that I have on my arm just above the teardrops okay I'm gonna start from the inside out so I'm going to take it and I'm just going to make a swirl it's now connected the lines. I didn't look at it. Don't look at your swirl as you're making it. It's going to come out really bad. Most people that do swirls are, you know, they're trying to make it look perfect and it just doesn't come out that way and it gives more angles than anything else. Yes, that may look good for some designs, but if you want to do, you know, a nice swirl, you just do your swirl. I know it doesn't look good on this screen, but. I'm trying my best. I gotta figure out a better way for this uh, camera system. But, you know, um, I notice I have five viewers online. Is there anybody online that has any questions um, about what I just showed you um, about teardrops and swirls? You can chat with me online. Just use the live stream chat because I can't see the Facebook chat. You know, or you can give me a call at the number that's on the screen. Um, trying to do my best here. Let me s Maybe a washcloth will work better. Eh, water. Ugh. All right. So John, why don't you give me a call? I know you said you were going to. Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> if it's not working for some reason, just give me a chat. <laughs> All right, so um, as always, brought to you in part by Kickstart. Best Mountain Dew out there. Whenever I'm on my long drive, I always get a nice Kickstart. Hello, welcome to the show. Hey, what's going on, it's John. Hey, what's up, John? Finally made it to my show. I know, I know right? Every time I. Uh... Every time I see you post it, I've already missed it by an hour. <laughs> I'm always running around or at Philly Farm or, you know, whatever. 
I always miss it. But I do watch the, the playback. It's fun. So while you're on the show, and I know that you just did um, a live recording with the Wolf Brothers today, how is Brian doing? We did. Oh, it was great. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they they always look at everything in the positive. So, you know, they were joking around, and you know, everything was good. Um, we did two classes today for Faba TV. Um, it was actually Nick Wolf painting. Um, actually, he painted everything, and Brian was just the the model today. So. Oh. Uh, well, I guess he did have yeah, a little yeah. bit more canvas right now, right? Yeah, he has a lot more canvas, and we actually did some full head designs um, on him. So, oh, that'll be um, cool. That's interesting. So, anybody yeah. watching this, uh, make sure you go and check out that when he has it up on Faba TV. So, yeah, I'm not sure when those launch. We usually shoot classes, and then you know, sometimes sometimes they go up right away, and sometimes you know we archive them until later dates. Um, you know, sometimes six months to even a year later. Sometimes. Oh, you so know, people are gonna on, uh, people are gonna want to watch oh, you're those now. Out. I can't hear your bump. Oh. <laughs> I said people are going to want to watch those now because yeah, of Brian yeah. and them. Uh, they'll go up, you know. It won't be this month because we already have our schedule set for, for July, what launches. Um, so it might be the month after. Right. We'll definitely throw in, you know, the Wolf Brothers, they always get us a lot of views, a lot of new subscribers. So we definitely love when they come to the studio. But yeah, today was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. Did you have any questions on teardrops, swirls, anything? It doesn't have to be teardrops. No, you know what? After watching hours and hours and hours of classes by editing and shooting, I'm so done with swirls and curls and <laughs> teardrops. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Yeah. I mean, that's why, like, in the convention, everyone's like, oh, did you go to this class or did you go to that class? And I don't want to see a single class because I see so many classes. You're you know, editing the classes. <laughs> What's that? I said, you're editing the classes. Yeah, exactly. So after, you know, I shoot them for a few hours, and then I'm editing for, you know, 20 hours a class. You know, I don't think people really realize how much um, work goes into doing or producing a one-hour video, or oh. I'm sorry, a one-hour high-definition video with three cameras. You know, that one-hour class actually takes me probably about 20, 25 hours just to edit, not, not you know, counting all of the encoding and uploading and shooting. So oh, yeah. I would say it's probably each class is about 30 hours. Oh yeah, De Jeez. yeah. I do my videos. I try to cut them down as short as possible, so I don't have as much encoding time. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. You know, everybody always says. I mean, video. It's easy. You know, it's once once you get it down, it's easy. It's just very, very, very time consuming. Oh yeah. And um, you know, especially rendering. It, you know, it, it's the worst is when you have an hour to deliver a project, but you have a four hour render. There's nothing you can do. Well, um, maybe I can help you out because I know a lot of people watch my videos after the show because they can't watch it during the time that I'm doing it. But um, right. what did you think about um, Fabaic this year? And um, what do you think are the great points that anybody that's watching this that hasn't gone um, need to hear so that they can go next year? Wow. I mean, there's so many things. Um, I mean, the main thing is you're going to meet everybody that you always see online. That's the main thing. And it's so cool that everybody's so open. I mean, you would think that, I mean, I see it all the time where people are like, oh my God, it's Nick Wolf. Oh, he talked to me. Oh. But <laughs> he talks to everyone. Like, he's very, they're very, very outgoing. And every artist is. I haven't run across one artist when you try to talk to them and they're like, oh, who are you? Oh, no, no. You know, or anything like that. They're, everybody's so willing to help you. And I think that's the biggest, you know, especially new artists that are kind of intimidated. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good experience for them to, to really get to know everybody and then, and also to realize they're not alone. You know, if they have questions, there's people that will help them. And I think the convention is a big, big, you know, part of, of helping people out. Um, plus ideas. You, you learn, I don't know, you learn so much with all the classes. There's, you know, a lot of people, their first time, they get really overwhelmed. And I can understand that. There's just so much mm -hmm. going on and you have so many things you want to see. But the next year, the second year you go, and now you kind of know what you want to go to. Um, so, the, like I said, the first year, you're really overwhelmed. The second year, I think, is where you can really tune in to what you want to learn and what you want to see. And that's where, where it starts, you know, building more for you. The first time is like Disneyland. You just want to see everything and do everything. And by, you know, 10 o'clock at night, you are passed out. <laughs> Except for a few of us that go out to the hot tub. But 
well, there's always a hot tub. I actually didn't make it to the hot tub this year. I was so, um, I had so many things going on. I'm so busy by the time, you know, I would leave it. I don't even know what time I left every night. I, I actually didn't stay at the hotel this year because um, I had to walk my dog every night and every morning. So I, you know, I lived maybe, excuse me, uh, maybe 10 minutes away. So I just slept at my house every day. Yeah, um, well, when you work for Silly Farm, you don't have that much time off. <laughs> no, I mean, like Especially, I said, I, I'm editing. I'm actually encoding videos right now and editing. I'm going on vacation the beginning of July, and from the 1st to the 10th is when I have scheduled to do all my videos um, for Fama TV, so I need to actually have those finished earlier, um, well, before the 3rd now. So, yeah, I'm just trying to knock all these videos out and also other projects that I do. Right. So where are you going whitewater rafting at? Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we're going to Tennessee. Um, I'm from Florida. I'm like, you know, we, for family vacations, we always go to Disney World or, or Busch Gardens. So we've never really been past Orlando with the kids. And um, I just figured let's do something adventurous and do something completely out of the norm that we would normally do. You know, people up north, they're probably like, ah, oh, whitewater rafting, that's nothing. To us, it's a big <laughs> deal. Because we're going to do whitewater rafting. We're going to do rock climbing. We're going to do uh, caving, um, kayaking, all kinds of stuff. And you said in so, Tennessee? Yeah. What's that? You said in Tennessee? In Tennessee? I don't know where. It's, um, I don't even know. I haven't looked at, uh, I don't know. I don't know where. It's, uh, yeah, I have to look it up. But it's like south, southern Tennessee. It's just oh, okay. outside of Georgia where we're going. Oh, the Ocoee River. The Ocoee River is where okay. we're going. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was gonna say if you were up a little bit closer, you can come by and visit, or we can meet up somewhere. But okay. I said if uh, you were closer by, because I'm in uh, Northeast Tennessee and uh, oh, Southwest okay. Virginia area, we could always meet up. But you're gonna be a little bit too far for me right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a little. We're way down to tip of Georgia. But yeah, that's pretty cool. But um, what else are we gonna say? Uh, you know, I just want to say one thing too. We're going back to convention and people, people kind of seeing that everybody is a people, just like everybody else. Uh, even with Fabo TV, the way we we structure the classes or, or have them go is, you know, people see um, Pasher, you know, Nick and Brian Wolf. They see Jay Bautista, and they think that they never make any mistakes. But they're people. Oh, yeah. So the way we do the classes is, and I tell them when they when they do a class and they make a mistake, we don't stop the cameras. We keep going, and yep. the artist teaches them how to fix the mistakes. So that really adds a lot of you know characters to the artists also. So, well, the artists yeah. the artists themselves are learning a lot from some of the students. Like, you know. Oh, well, actually, the artists. Uh, well, that and also the artists are even learning from other artists that they never because the artists are so busy teaching classes they never get to take classes. Right. So I know, like Margie Cantor, for instance. You know, she she has Father TV and she um she takes Marcellus classes. She takes uh, I think she did a uh, a tribal class. Um, now she's getting more into zombies, so she's watching a lot of the Wolf Brothers and her zombie stuff. Um, she was in my class at Fabaic, and she loved it. Which, if you talked to her about six months ago, she hated zombies. She wouldn't even, um, yeah, she she hates them. But now now she loves zombies, and she's even posted some pictures of the king of the zombies. Well, so, yeah, I, a lot of the artists are even learning <laughs> from other artists that they normally never would have, you know, seen. Right. Well, I can guarantee Margie Cantor. <laughs> I, was, okay. I was gonna say I I can guarantee Margie Canner six months ago was interested in zombies because she was down in Lafette in New Orleans, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's I think that's when she got into zombies because I think somebody painted her and then she took a bunch of pictures and. Oh yeah. You know, the, I, I'm not really I'm not much of a painter. I mean I picked up a lot uh, two years ago on on my uh, just a quick story. So two years ago um, when I got into helping Heather and Silly Farm put together Fabo TV, I never picked up a paintbrush, I'm not a painter, I'm not an artist, I don't do any of that, I just do video, graphic design, printing, things like that. Um, but by watching the videos over and over and hours and hours, I just started picking up certain things to where now I guess I do zombies and, and gore type stuff, um, and people seem to be taking a liking to it. Um, but yeah, just from being around it, I forgot what I was going, what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going somewhere with that. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> well, you've come a long way in, what, just about two years? Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. Yeah, in two years, I, you know, come from, you know, nobody knowing me at all. Now everybody seems to know me. You know, I give a, a large, pretty much 98% of that to being a part of Fava TV. 
that people get to see me. Um, but now I have, you know, requests for different things and, um, you know, to, I've had two requests to go different places to, um, to teach zombies now, which is kind of, kind of cool, I guess. And, um, yeah, I remember when, um, Heather, she wanted me to do, um, uh, a Faba TV class and I felt uncomfortable in a couple of ways. One was, you know, I've only been doing this for a year and, you know, going up against pastures and wisers and all these people, I, I just didn't think that I belonged doing a class yet. Um, but the things I was doing is kind of is different than, than other artists, I guess, are doing. Right. Um, so she convinced me to do it in my first class and I was so nervous, but the feedback I got back from it really was um, inspiring and um, it pushed me to go a little bit further. So that's what I'm doing now, just trying to learn new techniques and then bring them to everybody else, which is pretty cool. So when you have zombie ice, when are you going to start zombying up your employees to serve out the zombie ice? Well, the, the thing is with the zombie ice is we wanted because, w w the, for the people who don't know, um, zombie ice, we have a food truck in South Florida. Um, we're voted number one food truck in South Florida by Channel 10, um, top, whatever, top, whatever, uh, or Fort Lauderdale, or, sorry, Channel 10 top Picks, I guess it's called, or whatever. Um, last week right. we won New Times, which is a magazine on here, New Times Best Food Truck in Palm Beach, Broward County. And then last week also we signed a deal that we're now official partners of the Miami Dolphins in Sunlight Stadium. Um, so because we're around a lot of kids, we didn't want scary zombies. So if you see our logo or any of our stuff, they're zombies, but they're very fun looking. They're not bloody and gory. They're just, you know, fun. And that, in fact... Um, um, Sean Abram, he's the one that drew out our logo, the, the zombie character. Right. Um, he was there at the very beginning when I was talking about it, and he's like, oh, maybe I can draw something, or I asked him if he could draw something for me. Right. And uh, on his airplane ride on the way home, he uh, he sent me over this little character, and I was like, that's perfect. And it's exactly what we were looking for, so now, you know, thank you to Sean Abram. We've been using his design for our everything. Um, so that was pretty cool. So again, you know, face painters helping the world. <laughs> and did I see you have a karaoke thing on your truck? On the, on the truck, everything's completely digital. All of our menus are digital. Um, we have a karaoke, we have an Xbox, <laughs> we, have, uh, we have a satellite, so in case there's games going on, football games or basketball games or whatever, um, we play those, which is kind of cool because when football season's you know around, especially on Monday nights when we do events, we play the game. And we'll have, you know, 30 or 40 people standing in front of our truck, mostly guys, you know, watching the game because their wife drug them out to a food truck event, and, you know, not everybody's happy. So <laughs> the other trucks aren't too happy about it because they usually don't have a TV on theirs, but, yeah, it's pretty neat. That is so we always pretty try cool. To, you know, we always try to stay ahead. My background's marketing, um, so I just know, you know, you always have to take it one step ahead, you know, always. Uh. Well, the next time I'm out that way, I'm going to have to have some zombie ice. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you should have, well, I think you had one of the adult zombie ice that's a big last year, not the one that just passed, but the one before. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's fun when you have the coconut run to the mix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I had one of those, though. Uh, no, you didn't? No, uh, I didn't have any uh, zombie ice this year or last year. Um, I should have. Uh, it would have been really good. <laughs> It was nice and hot this year outside. Who, who else so. is watching? I see you have six viewers. I mean, one of them is me, so I see uh, five viewers. Who's there? Um, I have no I'm idea. Well, actually, I can have... Uh, can you say hi? You're on my wall and your, uh, you're showing some stuff, so... Right. Well, um, actually, one of the viewers is me. It counts me automatically. So well, I, I have four other four, viewers. Right? So where are the other four? <laughs> I have no idea. I already asked them <laughs> if they have any questions. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, some of that come up. <coughs> so, what was your what was your topic of the discussion tonight? Uh well, it was teardrops and swirls, but that was only you know kind of Mel. I'm here just watching and listening. You don't want to participate, Mel? <laughs> A what? And, uh, Mel popped in in the chat room. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> hey, Mel. Hi, Mel. I don't know now. Do I know now? I'm so bad with uh Too much of a newbie. Faces. It doesn't matter how much of a newbie you are. We're not here to judge you. 
Um, just like the convention, we're not there to judge you. We're there to help you. I mean, I started off really bad with face painting. I can guarantee if uh, you ask Mark Reed to show you his pictures of when he first started, they were pretty terrible. <laughs> oh, you should actually, actually, this is fun. Go to Margie's page and ask Margie to see her first design. She'll show you. It's horrible. <laughs> I mean, when I say horrible, it was great for being a beginner and just starting, and her having the the, the um, you know being brave enough to put that out there, um, and then compared to what her stuff is now. But it's funny what in a short period of time how far you can actually go as long as you're practicing. You know, the best way to do that is to get out there and get jobs, and don't be afraid. Um, again, I'll go back to when I first started. I've only literally I picked up a brush maybe four weeks, and Heather um, from Silly Farm. She, uh, she called me to her office, she, and she's like, hey, John, what are you doing on the 16th? And I said, <laughs> um, I don't know. Why? She's like, oh, because I just booked you for an eight-hour face paint job at this convention. They need, like, not a convention, at a, a kid's event, and every year they hire, like, 40 face painters. And I'm like, what? Really? But I don't know how to paint anything. She's like, you'll figure it out. So <laughs> I went to this thing literally, you know, and I'm there. Let's see, Weiser was there. Kelly from Australia was there. Um, uh, Lynn Davidson, Pam Trent. Um, Abby Trent, Heather, I mean, all of these artists are there, and then there's me, okay? <laughs> so I learned two boy designs, and I can do, I can do like, rainbows and, you know, princess masks. I don't, I'm okay. So the boy designs, I learned a snake, and I learned uh, Miami Heat logo. So every kid that would get in the chair, I'm like, all right, do you want to be a really cool snake or have a Miami Heat logo? And they'll be like, I want to be Batman. So I would say, okay, do you want a really cool snake or a Miami Heat basketball? And then they kind of look at me and say, a snake? I'm like, perfect, that's my specialty. <laughs> so, you know, you don't have to be afraid if they want, you know, Superman or they want something crazy. You just suggest it to them. They'll, they'll take anything. Kids are very easygoing. It's the parents that make things difficult. <laughs> so, yeah, as long as you get out there and just do it, that's the way you're going to get better by, you know, by being out there. Yeah, my girlfriend is learning that. For it, it's even more of a plus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I got paid like 400 or what was it? 450 bucks or something like that. So I was like, cool, I did oh, two wow. designs all day. I made 450 bucks. I'm good with that. Yeah, the money really is a draw for people. Unfortunately, there are some out there that, you know, they see what we do and then they try to do it themselves and they use all the wrong products, uh, you know, acrylic paints and, you know, really bad stuff from like Walmart. And they think that they're doing a really good job or they're doing it for free or for very little when there's another person out there. And instead of going up to the person who does it professionally and asking them, hey, what do you use? They just go and they do it on their own and they think that they can make a lot of money at it. You know, right. I, I try to approach these people and I tell them, look, here's my card. Contact me. I can, you know, show you a few things, show you the right products. You know, we can get you going a little bit better. I'm not in it for competition with people in my area. Um, even though I'm one of the only uh, face painters in the area and there is... Um, a Lynn Backus who has Express It Face and Body Art who used to be my old business partner. She does uh, good face painting in the area. Uh, her granddaughter helps her out. There's just not a lot of us in the area. So, you know, but we have enough people. We can easily, you know, accommodate more. I mean, some of the festivals are so big, it doesn't matter if, you know, there's one or three face painters in the area. But uh, it's not as big as Orlando or Miami or Fort Lauderdale. You know, we don't have that much people. We don't have that big of a corporate area either. So it's a little bit more even, difficult even, for us. <laughs> even with competition, I always tell people, you know, because, uh, I mean, the face painting is competitive. It can be competitive. I've, I've learned in the last couple of years that it's, you know, it can be. Um, but like any business, um, but there's plenty of business out there. No matter where you are, there's business. You just have to go out and find that business. You know, don't don't think of, oh, you know, this guy, he paints the same as me and he's in the same town. Who cares? He can only do so many people at one time. So you do all the other events. You know, business, I worked for myself. I've had my own business since 2001. So was that, 12, 12 years, 13 years? Wow, that's a long time. Um, yeah. But anyway, you know, I... Um, if I'm home sitting on the couch, I'm not finding business. You know, I have to go out and I have to hustle. When things get slow, I'm out hustling. You yep. know, and that's if you know I have to push my own business, and that's how that's how I get it. Um, luckily, I've reached a point now where I get a lot of word of, word of mouth. You know, I have steady gigs like um, 
Cabo TV and things like that. Um, and I have other contracted jobs that I do. So, but you have to go out and find it. And you know, I, I even me, like most of my friends are all video production people, but we don't see each other's competition. In fact, I just called one now because I need to borrow a camera for Monday. And instead of him being like, what do you mean you need to borrow a camera? Well, why didn't you hire me? Well, look, he's gonna let me borrow his camera because later he'll need to borrow something for me and I'll give it to him. So for me, I've always learned just treat everybody with the same respect and don't, because you never know when you're gonna need that other person or oh, help yeah. or anything like that, so. And I try to tell people that um, even like Facebook is a big, uh, uh, it's a big problem for some people. Uh, there's a big thing, you have your business profile you have your business page strictly for your business you know it talks about your business it shows your business and everything else but people don't understand that your personal profile is your personal profile um, that's where you can let out what you want and stuff like that people get it mixed up and they kind of look at things the wrong way and even if you have people you know like I do in my area I actually showed some people some face painting and next thing you know they snubbed me they talk behind my back and stuff like that. Well, I still have no real ill will for them. I want to work with them. I've offered them to help out with me at jobs and stuff so that they can make some money, but they kind of just push me to the side. And I'm trying to tell them this. Whatever I do in my business is business. It's not my personal life. I'm not there to discuss anything from my personal life. I'm there to work, make people happy, paint faces, have a good time. You don't have to like me personally to work with me professionally and you know that's in any workplace that you're at you're always going to have those people that you know they work with each other but they may dislike each other and you yeah. know we just have to work through all that yeah, so. sure. <laughs> do you agree <laughs> no I definitely I, I agree I mean I have there's plenty of people that yeah we don't like each other but when we work together, things get done and things get done nicely. You know, we know that. So right. we get through whatever whatever silliness we've gone through um, for the, you know, the end goal is to just be happy and make some money and, you know, do your thing. Oh, yeah. Well, it's nice to see you, Monsi. Uh, how are you doing down there in Chattanooga besides uh, being good on good terms with your competition but that they're scared of you. <laughs> you can type it below. Um, <laughs> it's great to see some more people interacting. I'm glad Monsi's here. She actually uh, used to live near me, and um, I worked with her at a couple of events. She does really awesome henna. She is um, of the Indian descent. And uh, she does really awesome henna. She got into face painting and glitter tattoos. And she does a really great job with that. Uh, in fact, um, you can check her out uh, on Facebook at uh, Monsi's Art. If you see the chat window, you just type in Monsi Art there. And uh, there, either that or she can um, post a link down below. And because uh, I do allow links in my chat. So if you post a link down there. It'll go out to everybody, and then I'll copy and paste that into uh, the recording that I'll put up on Facebook later. So, and I'll also put it on YouTube. There you go. HennaFyMeChattanooga.com. <laughs> so, anything else you want to talk about, John? Um, uh, anything you want. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much here. I'm waiting for videos to save and download. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that I can spend half of my night editing. <laughs> have you tried doing henna? Henna, yeah, I did. It's, just, it's, um, it's actually a lot easier than I thought it would, or a lot easier, yeah, a lot easier than I thought it would be. As long as you have good henna, don't buy the cheap stuff, and definitely don't buy anything that's black. No. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever explained to them the the dangers of black henna. I reiterate about black henna all the time. Uh, just stay away. If it's black, step back. If it's brown, stick around. Um, you there know. you go. That's, that's, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, and if, if, you're, if you're not sure, just so we don't get in too much detail with that, um, if you just Google black henna or yeah. dangers, you'll see all kinds of, all the technical info on that. Yeah, just Googling black henna. Kind of a hair dye that's in there. 
a chemical that's in hair dye and it actually burns your skin and there's people with huge blisters like and melting their skin it's horrible yeah. and um you know they need to some serious serious health problems so if it's black <coughs> you say it's black, step back. If it's brown, stick around. Yep, that's what I say. There you go. <laughs> I like that. I've never heard that before. I'm going to use it. Well, you know, can't use it with coral snakes anymore. They're not too often around the area anymore. So, <laughs> but, uh, how do you shut the music off? Okay, if you're having a problem shutting the music off on my website, scroll back to the top of the screen. At, at the very top, it's got a little play thing up there it says uh, Catman or KFBA mix party mix just click on the pause button and uh, it'll stop the music and then you can hear more of this um, if for some reason you're turning in tuning in kind of late like I said I do record my shows so you'll be able to watch it later on uh, from my website or you can actually uh, watch it from YouTube and because uh, I'm gonna download it and upload it to YouTube later so that you can watch it on your uh, mobile devices and uh, smartphones, so tablets, everything else. <laughs> right now, Ooh. for some reason, I don't have YouTube Live, but as soon as I do have YouTube Live, I'm going to be switching over like Faba TV did. And uh, yeah, we have YouTube Live. That way, you can get very good, high quality images for free, so I don't have I'll to pay the for one, the one downfall to that that I hate. And there's like a minute delay. Well, I've got a little bit of a delay on mine too. No, it's not. I was just so. thinking. It's not like your your delay is like maybe three seconds. Like a minute really, really causes problems. <laughs> right. So, you know, like anything, you work through it. Well, then is what I'll do is I'll start my videos a minute early. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but then again, if I do a call in, it's always going to be a minute behind. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> So, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to work out something, and maybe by the time I get live, they'll have that problem fixed. Yeah. So. Yeah, that would be good. But, uh, uh, what else? I got 18 minutes left. All right, well, <laughs> I'll, stick, I'll stick on the line. I don't know if anybody has any questions for me or for you. or. Anybody, anybody got any questions there? for John? Blue Topaz, like, okay. Monsi, Mel. Like, who's John? <laughs> oh, if you look up uh, John Place <laughs> on Facebook, you can see a whole bunch of zombies with this smiling guy there. That's John. <laughs> Hold on, I'll, give you, I'll give you a link. Wait, uh, where's my link? Oh, there it is. There it is. There's a link. <laughs> John is a jack of all trades. He does everything and anything. Today. Yeah, I do a lot of things. I pick up things pretty quick. It's, it's really weird. <laughs> uh, people, you know, people that are always asking me, you know, what I do. That's the hardest thing. <laughs> Especially with my kid, my kids too. They're like John, or they're like Dad. What do you do? <laughs> I'm like, well, what do you tell people? He's like, I just tell them you do everything. <laughs> And you pretty much do. I mean, from doing the videos to website to you know promotional materials. Well, here's, the quick list. Here's, here's the quick list. I do. I do. My main thing is video production. Um, so I do video production, um, graphic design, printing. I have a food truck, number one food truck in South Florida, just to say. Um, now I do face and body painting with a question mark. <laughs> um, I I have an app in development right now for um, I can't say what it is for, but it's uh, for the I would say event photography industry. Right. Um, that's going along pretty well. I should have I have a couple prototypes and they're working well. So the final version should hit iTunes probably next month. Um, I have a couple other products in production. Yeah, I do a lot of things, and then I have three kids on top of all that. Jeez. So we got a couple questions here for you, though. Um, oh, for me? Yeah. First one is, what did you have for lunch? And the second is, when can they see your live class on Faba TV? Well, for lunch today, we went out with the Wolf Brothers because they were in the studio, and we had um, Peruvian food. Um, if you've never had Peruvian food, it's just like pretty much any other Latin food. I had chicken and rice. <laughs> so that's what I had there. 
Um, my class for Fava TV, it's already up. Um, if you don't have Fava TV, you won't be able to see it because what happens is we do the free classes and then once uh, we do the free class, then is when we upload them to the website and you have to be a subscriber to watch the classes after the free night. Um, so I do have a class up there and I'm on the 28th, I'm actually filming a second class to have on Fava TV, um, which will be zombies, I guess, zombie related. I think I just named it zombies. <laughs> so that's, um, I, I have, let me see, hold on, I should, uh, give me one second, I'm trying to find a link for you. <laughs> give me one second here. Also make sure you place up a link to your uh, business site for your business cards and everything. So that anybody out okay. there looking for good quality stuff can get it from you. I'm trying to find my, uh. Remember, everybody, the links that they're providing in the chat room. I will so be here, posting. If you want to do something cool, actually, so. um, it's not a class, but here's a full. You know, let me, here, you can just watch this for free. There's a that's that's a fun watch. I did um, a full zombie makeup on my daughter for Halloween, and this is pretty much a time lapse from beginning to end. It took me about an hour and 45 minutes to to build it, and this is like a, I don't know, I think it's a seven minute video. Okay. Eight minutes, 40 thing. seconds. There it is. So that's something. But um, yeah. Oh. I'm a printing. What is it? Uh, bizcardstore.com? Yeah. The yeah, bizcard the store. bizcardstore.com. And I do, you know, like I said, I do graphic design, printing, um, all that good stuff. I don't do websites. I heard you mention I do websites. I you started don't? doing websites a few years ago. I did my fifth website and I quit. I said, forget yeah. that. Websites are, they never end. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that does websites, I bow down to them because that's a hard job. It is, and there's a lot of uh, free ones you can do now that are uh, pretty good to use. Like, I go through Wix.com to build my website, and um, it's yeah. all HTML5, so it really works great. That's cool. A lot of good features yeah, you can put in. So, uh, Anybody have more questions? Let's see. How do I show up the music now? Yeah. Let me see. Did you answer what you had for lunch? Yeah, the Peruvian food. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Everybody in the office they love this Peruvian place. I don't know the name, but um, they always buy it. And today we went there. Actually, it was uh, Marcella and the Wolf Brothers. Uh, I don't know. The la there was another lady that was with us. Marcella's friend and uh, myself. But yeah, it's pretty good. Marcella has the best stories. If, if anyone out there has never met Marcella or sat down and listened to her stories, uh, she has the funniest stories. Yeah, she's a great lady. La Perla? Yeah. Oh, yeah, is that what it is? <laughs> Who's that? Blue Tapas. <laughs> I think that is the name of the place. I'll have to check it out the next time I'm down there, which will probably be next year. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is the name. Who, who's that? Uh, blue, what is it? Uh, Who is Blue, to blue Topaz? Topaz? Who is Blue Topaz? <laughs> Announce yourself, please. <laughs> Announce yourself. <laughs> No, they want to stay a mystery. Anonymous. It's probably some. It's probably somebody from my office. <laughs> and tomorrow they're gonna be like, "Hey, Paulette, she had the pork." Oh, hey, Paulette. <laughs> That's who. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't remember your name. <laughs> yep. It would have been funny if it was Andrew. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, the place is really good. And the, the portions they give you is amazing. Like, it's so big. Brian, you couldn't finish it. I think Nick couldn't finish it. Marcella took hers to go. And Paulette, same thing. She took hers to go. I finished mine because I was hungry. <laughs> I brought up Andrew. Can you tell me what the point of putting Andrew in the girls' bathroom is? <laughs> Just because it's funny. <laughs> you saw that? Yeah, they posted a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we always, we do silly things around that place. I don't know if you guys, did you see the prank I did for April Fool's at Silly Farm? I think so. What, the refrigerator? Um, I'll find the link and I'll put it online if I can. I'll put it, uh, yeah, I'll link it to uh, this video. <laughs> oops, where's my, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty funny. I had all of them, I had a couple of them mad at me and they called me called me names now I know what they really think of me <laughs> <laughs> you should do like a monthly prank video there <laughs> I, I always do stuff with that and what's funny is when you watch the video the first thing everyone says is John right John did this John I'm like why is that happening to me <laughs> Here's, there's a link you can watch that later okay yeah it's pretty fun I'll post it up for the video with the video so everybody can see them <laughs> yeah I mean, you know, everybody, you can go over to my um, my YouTube page and like my, uh, just like my page, and whenever I upload new videos, you can watch them. Um, I don't really upload very often, but when I do, they're usually somewhat entertaining. <laughs> I wanted to start doing more tutorials um, on different things. I did, a, there's actually a tutorial on there of me splitting open my cheekbone, or cheek, right. like an eye gas. Um, if you want to check that out, that's... Uh, that's on there, but I think that's pretty much the only like how to video I have going on. Because uh, you know, I've only been doing this a short time, and my tricks are very limited. I call myself the the two trick magician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I pick things up, and what do they say? Fake it till you make it. So that's what I do. I pretty much just you know, I do my thing. If people like it, great. If they don't, I'll they'll learn to love me. <laughs> I am pleased. Yeah, I wish I had a picture to put up. Uh, Paulette was the one that painted the cupcake Marie Antoinette at Fabaic, and that was a really awesome oh, okay. piece. Um, she looked really good, and that's why I don't compete. I'm not as good as you guys. <laughs> For the um, somebody um, uh, says a general question: Is it easier to learn face painting or to learn henna? I'll tell you from my experience and not really being much of a space painter. Um, Hannah's amazingly easy as long as you can, I mean, you just learn shapes pretty much and just copy those shapes over and over and over again. Yeah, it's just pretty much patterns for Hannah. I think Hannah's pretty easy. However, Hannah is semi, I would, I don't want to, it's not permanent, and I don't want to use a permanent, but once you lay down Hannah, you only have like a couple seconds really to remove it if you make a mistake. Right, because um, it starts it starts working right away. Where it, face paint, you know, if you mess up, you can wipe it off and start over. Henna's a little more, you know, um, unforgiving. Yeah, it's a little little more permanent. And when I say permanent, <laughs> you know, by a week or two, you know, good henna will last you a few weeks. Um, yeah, so that's that. I actually I think that's my take on it. I actually think they're both easy. It's just how much work you want to put into practicing and actually doing it. Um, Anything that we do, um, as far as henna or face painting, I grasp a hold of it really quickly because it's something that I like to do and I want to, it's a passion that I have and it's something that I want to move forward in my life with. Other people, they look at it, they think, oh, this is, it's easy, I could do that. And then they start to do it and they get frustrated, they don't really put their whole heart into it and they just end it at that point. They do it once and then they're over with it. Um, if you really want to do it, you have to actually have the passion for it. My girlfriend does. That's why she has a kid of her own. She's also learning henna and glitter tattoos and everything else. So, you know, that way she can help me out at different events. So I don't have to do it all myself. <laughs> and we yeah, make and twice as much. If you're not artistic at all, um, Michelle, Michelle Zymet, um, my girlfriend, she um, she doesn't paint or anything, but she does so many jobs with glitter tattoos. And she yeah. makes the same amount as a face painter. And she just shows up with her glitter tattoo kit and, and in fact she helped out uh, Mackie during the convention and Mackie gave her like a complete kit like a $350 kit <coughs> for helping her helping him at the booth 
So she was like crazy excited. Uh, and she's already done two jobs, you know, just doing those. So, you know, um, glare tattoos is, is great getting into. Well, and you can make it into an art. People think, oh, it's just glitter tattoo. You put down a stencil and you add some glitter. And yes, that's it. That is what it is. But you can make it more artful, you know, by right. adding certain colors and blending in different colors. And, you know, so it, you can make anything into an art. Well, I mean, just it's like people are, you know, you always get people saying, oh, you know, using stencils when you're painting, that's cheating. It's not cheating. <laughs> it's, it's not just a cheating. Tool no. To enhance your painting. Um, really good example is, and I go back to Mark Reed because. I actually first met him in 2008 in New Orleans, and that's when he actually showed a picture of a tiger face and a butterfly face. He really wasn't that good artistically. He just, he saw, hey, can you do face painting? He said, sure. He starts doing it. You know, he picks it up, and he just keeps going with it. He develops his skill over time. He gets better with it. He wasn't the best artist in the world, but if you keep going with it, you keep practicing, you'll pick up the skills. Um, another person over in uh, Australia, Beckstar Anthony, um, she actually, in just three and a half years, has surpassed everybody else's expectations. She just practiced, 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 and she went from doing simple makeup on people to these elaborate body paintings and sugar skulls and all kinds of stuff. I mean, she's an incredible artist and stuff. She did have a little bit of an artistic ability in the beginning. I mean, she has a little bit of artistic background. Some of us do. I don't consider myself very artistic, but I have learned to put lines where they need to be and, you know, work on different things and just practice. Anybody can do it. Anybody who says they can't just doesn't have, you know, the passion for it. And, you know, that's all it is. If you have a passion for it, you're going to pick it up real quick, easy. It's going to be great. Well <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how else I could say it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's worth anything. The more you practice, the better you get. I mean, that's just the, the way of life. People think that, um, you know, they're just going to, or for instance, this, they think, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to spend, you know, I'm going to buy a $300 glitter tattoo kit. And I'm going to have all kinds of business because I can charge however much per hour. But then they sit there wondering why their phone's not ringing yeah. and they're not out pushing it or showing it. So it's like anything. You know, you, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Yep. And um, nothing's for free. You know, you're not going to buy the, the kit, sit on your couch, and the phone's going to blow up. You nope. need to go out and shake hands and kiss babies and all that stuff. <laughs> yes, nothing's you know? for free. Um, I even had somebody say, you know, what was it? I think I heard Nick tell somebody this, or it was Pasher. Sure. Um, one of those guys. If you're ever going to do something for free, make sure that the people that are asking for it supply you with everything you demand. Because if you're going to do anything for free, you're not paying your bills with zero dollars. So they're going to have to, you know, do everything for you at that point. Okay, I need a table. I need a chair. I need a tent. I need water at my table. Uh, drinking water at my table. I need to have this supplied, that supplied, everything else. Um, if I'm having to drive... All the way out there, you need to have me a hotel and my food cost, uh, you know, everything taken care of. If they really want you for free, they're going to find out that they're going to spend more money accommodating you than they would if they hired yep. you. I, I do the same thing, actually. When people call for free things, you know, I, I, I tell them, yes, I can do it for free. However, the materials I have to charge you for. Right. So, and then they're like, well, then that's not doing it for free. I'm like, well, no, I'm doing it for free. I'm giving you the service for free. But it's right. going to cost you, I, mean, I, I don't, jack, you know, jack it up. You know, I'll tell them it's $50 for all the materials that I'm using. Right. Um, you know, and the gas to get there because those are hard costs. Those are something I can't just donate. Right. And um, that's when you also find out who's serious about your business, you know. Um, that they just want you there for free and they're never going to call you again. You know, if they're willing to give you $50 to, to come there to do your service for free, then you know you'll get more business out of them um, because otherwise – People will take advantage of you, and you'll th that person will tell the next person that you did it for free. They'll tell the next person you do it for free, and now you're working for free, and you're mad at everybody because you're not making the money that everyone else is making because they're getting paid. Right. And that's something that we all need to learn is just don't do it for free, you know? Yeah. Well. No matter what it is, don't do it for free unless they're willing to accommodate you. If they accommodate you, that's fine. 
they accommodate your needs, that's fine. But, you know, if we all worked for free, we'd be living on the streets. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine me, homeless guy, face painting on the street just so I could survive? <laughs> You're walking from window. You can walk from window, car window to car window and paint a kid and... What is it? Uh, lights change every thirty seconds. Yeah, as they're walking by, I'll just hold the paintbrush up near them. That's funny. Uh, well, it's eight o'clock. Um, I'm gonna end this live show. Thank you for calling in, John, right. and uh, I'll make yeah, sure I. Well, anytime, I'm always around. <laughs> And I'll post all these links onto uh, Facebook underneath the recording. And also when I upload it to YouTube, all those links will be in there in the description. So you'll be able to go to everything that we talked about. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, yeah. And what's that? Actually, hang up. Call, call me back. Okay, I Actually, will. I'll just stay on the phone. I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you something. I'll stay on the phone. No problem. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> all right, bye, everybody. All right, <laughs> bye.